Do you ever feel like there isn't enough time in your room with everything that you need to get done? Or do you feel like maybe time's just dragging on and you feel lost and lonely? You know, time is one of those things in the universe that's finite yet abstract at the same time. We collectively understand it, but we interpret it individually. We definitely know how to measure it. A minute, 60 seconds, an hour is 60 minutes, Hours turn to days, days turn to years, and years turn into life. We know that it's limited and therefore valuable, which can sometimes cause us to worry and try to organize every second of our day to get as much done as possible. Our short and our long-term goals are planned out and life becomes about the careful execution of our plans. And yet sometimes it can feel like we've got all the time in the world and it gives us a lot of peace and enjoyment but can also cause us to avoid things that we may need to do as well. And then somewhere between our time and the scientific expression of time, there's this gift of time that comes from God. And it's mysterious, it's unknown, patient, and above all, perfect. Let me share how God's gift of time has worked in my life. So my parents immigrated to the U.S. when I was 13 months old. My mom told me that I was the one that taught them English. The funniest story that she would tell was when I was four years old, I told my, my father, Poppy, you pronounce it ham, like jamon. The silly part is, is that jamon is a Spanish word for ham. But anyways, this was a story that always made my, my parents chuckle. You know, when I was little, my Poppy was my hero. He always had the right answers. He was ambitious, handsome, hardworking, smart. He won several awards at work. We went to church. We took family vacations. He was very patriotic. He loved America. As I grew older, our family dynamic changed. My father became chauvinistic, narcissistic, and verbally abusive to my mother. He was gone most of the time, supposedly working. My parents divorced when I was 18, and this left me lost and confused about what a father's love truly meant. My mother was very firm and the expectation was clear that her daughters would go to college and be successful, no excuses. So I went full steam into my adult life and made so many mistakes, especially when it came to men. You could say that I was looking for love and acceptance in all the wrong places and had to deal with the emotional consequences of those actions shame, guilt, and remorse. At 23, I did meet a wonderful man, David Work. We moved to Texas and soon after married. We started our family and we had two wonderful children. Now, when the kids were little, I sensed this void in my life. There was just, I can't, there was this emptiness in my heart and my gut that I couldn't quite explain. I started attending a church down the street from my house, and I had the opportunity to go on a three-day spiritual retreat with a good friend. During that weekend, my life changed. I realized that I had sin in my life that I couldn't change on my own by trying to be good enough. Sin is when we ignore God or we leave him out of our life. I came to realize, you know, just how much Jesus loved me and that through him, I could have forgiveness and the love of a heavenly father. I began my journey of living out the truth of the Bible and finding spiritual rest with God. When I opened my insurance agency, some of my old habits appeared. I became consumed by my perfectionism and desire to make it a success. As my business grew, I continued that same frenetic pace. It was exhausting. I felt like I was neglecting my family. I hated being the taskmaster in the office. And this prompted me to do a lot of soul searching. You know, I came to realize that I had become so occupied with my business and it being successful that I had stopped spending time with God. I realized that I was trying to do it all on my own again. Now, this message was in the Bible was a game changer for me. Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, for I am gent gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. 
All of a sudden, I felt peace and balance amidst all the demands of a growing business. I was once again reminded that a time with God turns meaningless, worrisome toil into spiritual productivity and purpose. In 2001, my daughter and I were preparing to go on a mission trip to Honduras to a little girl's orphanage and school. And as part of our preparation, the leader asked us to take care of any, any unforgiveness that we might have in our lives. So as I prayed about this, it brought me back to my father. I had recently found out that he was in a nursing home. I had been estranged from him since my parents divorced 20 years earlier. I had written him off and I never spoke about him. Many of my friends in Texas just assumed that he was dead. He had continued to live a life of alcohol, drugs, and gambling, and was later diagnosed as a manic depressive. You know, I felt God nudging me to go and visit him. When I saw him, he was a mere shadow of the man that used to be my hero. He could not speak, and he was unable to eat on his own due to complications of a recent stroke. During my visit, I fed him and I read to him from my Bible. I wanted more than anything to know that he had God in his heart and he had made his peace. Through his tears and his gestures, I knew that he had accepted Jesus. In that moment, God healed a wound that I didn't even realize was there. And little did I know how much the story would help others. During the mission trip, I shared my story. And I was amazed at how it resonated with so many of the staff and the teachers there. You see, most of them had been raised there as orphans themselves. Most of them had been dropped off by their fathers at the orphanage because they had no means to take care of them. All of the women could identify with that yearning for a father's love. Being able to pray with the staff, allowing them to surrender their feelings of insecurity their feelings of not being good enough, and then being assured that with God, they always have a heavenly father who loves them just the way they are and is eager to spend time with them and that they've never been alone was such an amazing blessing for me. This experience gave me the assurance that with God, nothing is ever wasted. He can use everything for good at the perfect time. Do you feel overwhelmed or weary of trying to control the timing of all the things in your life? Do you feel like time is just dragging on and there's still something that's missing for you? Do you feel that emptiness in your heart or in your gut? Do you feel like you've done things in your life that, that can't be forgiven? I want you to know that you're not alone. Some of you may wonder if you know Jesus in the way that I've described, or if you, or if you know Jesus, you may feel that he's nudging you to reconnect to him. You can count on Jesus at all times. He loves you just the way you are, and he has a purpose and a plan for your life. The Bible says that Jesus came to earth that, so that we might have life and have it abundantly. He was crucified to pay the price for the sins of the world. That includes mine and yours. He rose again on the third day is proof that he's God's son, and he lives eternally at his right hand. Jesus tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to pray, and if these words um, express the desires of your heart to invite Jesus into your life, or if you feel him calling you to reconnect, to recommit to spending time with him, I invite you to pray silently along with me. I want you to know that Jesus knows your heart and he's eager to spend time with you. Please bow your heads. Jesus, I do believe that you're the son of God and that you died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sin. Forgive me. I turn away from my sin and I choose to live a life that pleases you. Enter my life as my savior and my Lord. I want to follow you and make you the leader of my life. Thank you for loving me with a love that never ends, for the gift of eternal life and for the Holy Spirit who has now come to live in me. Amen. If you just prayed this prayer with me, I want to welcome you to the family of God. 
I encourage you to share this, um, to share this with a friend. And, and I encourage you to tell us about your decision as well so that we can be in prayer for you and with you. You can go on our website. The information is there on the screen, stonecroft.org slash no dash God. There's a form there for you to complete. And once you um, submit the form, you're going to receive a digital download of this booklet, A New Beginning. This is a wonderful resource that's going to really support you. You know, my prayer and hope for each one of you is that you use the gift of time and spiritual rest with God to fully engage all of your divine gifts and talents. God has a purpose and a plan for you. He wants you to know that you're loved, you're brilliant, you're beautiful and worthy. God bless you.